G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and we've got a very quick, uh, fun little tutorial today um, looking at how to animate Revit doors using Dynamo. So today I'll be using Revit 2022 and Dynamo for Revit. Um, no third-party plugins. The script itself is really, really simple. It's more about building a flexible door family. This is topic today. Um, there will be a little bit of assumed knowledge, so if you've used family, the family editor before, there'll be a few things you'll probably understand more easily. Uh, but generally, what I'll be showing today is fairly fundamental in nature. Um, so as always, if I'm talking too fast, you can always slow the video down. If I'm talking too slow, you can speed it up. Um, I'll sound a little bit funny though. Um, but I guess without further ado, um, let's jump straight in. So today's technique is just really a little bit of fun, um, showing how you can use Dynamo to technically animate objects in Revit. Um, there are some other people out there that have done more complex animations um, than this one, but this is just an example. So I've just created some doors here that have the capability to move. Um, typically, I connect these to a parameter, usually a number parameter between zero and one, and I get them to open progressively along that slider. Now, this one's quite complicated. This is a stacking door, whereas this one's a little bit more simple. This one instead uses an angle. So in this case, I can gradually open the door. Now, obviously typing in that value one by one is not gonna be very, um, very useful. It's better to use something to drive this, and we can use Dynamo to drive this. I'm just gonna create another door and just show how you can set up a door to move. Um, I'm just gonna use a sliding door in this case. Um, so I'm just gonna make a new family and I'm just gonna make a standard door family. I'm gonna go and get rid of some of the rubbish that's in the door template, like these trims. I'm just gonna move my width away. And I'm also going to just get rid of a few of these parameters that aren't very useful. And let's um, set this up. I'll just call this typical and I'll make it a typical door size, 2040. Um, let's do a double door slider, a biparting slider. So I'll do 1840 and I'll create another parameter called leaf width on a type basis. And I'll divide, um, actually I'll multiply the leaf width by two to make the leaf width uh, drive the overall width. If you ever want to lock down a parameter um, like this, it's only driven by one parameter, a little trick you can do is say, if one equals one, which is always true, then make it the leaf width by two, otherwise make it you know, something that can never happen like zero. And you can see in this case, it will lock the parameter down, but it will technically always be satisfied by a condition that always has to be true. Um, so that can be quite useful if you're trying to just really limit your door family um, to something like this. We could alternatively create a relationship in the other direction where we set the overall width and then we say that the leaf width is going to be the width divided by two instead um, and that locks it the other way instead. Anyway, just a little trick there. So now we're going to create a door leaf. Um, I'm actually going to go and create a nested door leaf um, so that we don't have to model this component multiple times. I've actually already modeled one um, but I'll show you how to model one from scratch. So I'll make a new family um, for now, I'm just going to make a generic model so that it's not hosted to anything. And then from here, I'm just immediately going to switch to the doors category. And this will still create a door based object, but in this case, it won't actually be um, driven by a wall based host. So in this case, I'm just going to create two reference planes. I'm going to say this is the front of my door leaf and this is the back. I'll say this is uh, the right and this is the left. Now I'm sort of modeling this back to front. In this case, um, often people put the front at the top here. Um, for now, I'll just work with this orientation. It doesn't really matter as long as your planes can all be related to in the model. So I'm gonna create an extrusion. This will be my door leaf. And um, I could use a reference plane to drive the height, but I'm just gonna connect it to the extrusion end parameter. And I'm going to connect the height parameter that comes by default with all doors. And I'll say that this is a panel. Um, and I'll also associate a finish material to it as well. On the type, I'll do an instance basis. Uh, the last thing we need to do is constrain this in plan and in depth. So we'll say width and thickness. Whoops, thickness. I'm just going to go and apply some typical sizes to these. So 40 mil thick. 920 by 2040 millimeters. Um, and now we have a nice little nested leaf component. So I'm just gonna save this and I'm not gonna make it shared. I will turn off the always vertical and the work plane based option. And I'll show you why I do that in a sec. Um, so we'll just call this, um, actually I'll just call this nested leaf two. 
So if I load this into my work in progress family, I can now create uh, two leaves. Um, I'll point them this way and I'll mirror the other one. So effectively, we're gonna to wanna to put these here and push them away from the middle of the door. So I'm just gonna create two extra reference planes either side of the center of the family. And as this door gets wider or opens, it's going to push the leaves away from the middle. So I'm just gonna create a EQ EQ constraint here and a, another parameter. And I'm gonna call this um, opening or open distance an instance space parameter and I'm just going to put it under other because it's going to be driven by formulas. So now I can constrain to the reference on the end of the family and um, I can situate these pretty much wherever I want. Let's say in this case I just want to put these on the outside of the wall. Um, let's just say these are going to be the thickness offset from the wall. So I'm going to make that thickness. I can now hook up those parameters at a type level to the nested component as well so that this drives down. And um, in this case, I might be better off actually switching some of these parameters to instance-based. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my family and say that width should be instance-based and also height will need to be instance-based as well. A trick, if you can't access a parameter, um, say, you know, if I go to height here, it's an inbuilt parameter, so I can't make it instance-based, but if I can put that dimension somewhere in the family editor and reference it, I can switch it to instance space there. Just a little bit of a trick. Um, it's a shame Autodesk hasn't really given us just the ability to do that through the interface, but it is what it is. Um, so now we should have exposed the width, which we do have, and this will be the leaf width, and then the height, which in this case will just be the height. We can also nest the finished material down if we want to, I'll just leave this for now. Um, but now we can constrain the leaves like this as well. So how do we actually drive this open distance? Well, I always recommend no matter what type of opening you're dealing with, um, associate it to a formula with a parameter between zero and one. That way you can drive the opening distance of any type of family using a common number with a common range. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna create a new parameter called open factor and make it instance based, make it a number, and I'll just put it under dimensions for now, given it's a driving property of the family. And I can now say the open distance is going to be the open factor times, the, in this case, sorry, the leaf, uh, the width, because we're dealing with the combined opening of the two together. So now when I'm dealing with a opening factor of zero, we can see that my leaves will be closed. Um, when I go to halfway, we can see it's gonna push halfway open. And when I go to one, it's going to be fully open. Now, one problem here is if I go to 1.2, Obviously we start to get some illogical outcomes. If I go to negative 0.1, we're gonna run into issues. So let's actually lock this down to a formula to preserve it. So I'm gonna make another parameter and I'm just gonna call this override open distance. And I'm gonna say in this case, uh, actually no, I can probably do this within the open distance formula. I can. So what I'm gonna do is write a formula. I'm just gonna do it in notepad so it's easier to see. Um, so I'm gonna say if, the open factor, first of all, is less than zero, then it's going to be zero. If, so the next condition is if it's not zero, I'm gonna say the open factor is greater than one, then we're gonna say it's one. And finally, otherwise, it's just going to be the open factor because it's a valid value. So this will protect either end of our formula. Now I think in this case, I need to, need to make sure I get this right. Uh, okay, no, so I will actually connect this to a formula. Um, I'm gonna say in this case, uh, override open factor. There we go, that's what I wanna do. This needs to be a number parameter because we're driving it with a number. And then I use that formula and then I call on the override factor instead of the open factor directly. So if this becomes a negative value, we can see that the override keeps it at zero. If this becomes more than one, we can see the override will keep it at one. So this protects it from going outside the domain that it should fall within. So in this case, I'll just say by default, the door is closed, um, but we can see otherwise, we now have the ability to animate this door um, in stages. So I'll just save this door family and call this slide door. And I'll load this down into my demonstration project alongside my stacking and swinging door. So let's just put this one here, swap it over to the sliding door. 
Um, and we can see now we have the ability to say 0.5, 1, and we can actually open this door in 3D. Sometimes it is good practice to put a 2D representation that is always closed for these families um, so that they don't actually show as open, even if you want to show it for a sake of visualization. You probably don't want to open the door in floor plan. At the moment, I'm just using the 3D representation as the floor plan representation. So if these doors do open in floor plan, you will see it there as well. So it's up to you how you want to control this. So how have I actually set these other ones? I'll quickly just run through this. Um, so in this case, in, in the event of the swing door, uh, what I've done is use the old reference line trick. So I've got a maximum angle um, that can support the swing operation. And then I times the maximum angle times the open override factor with the same, basically the same logic. This time I'm dealing with an angle. That's really the only difference. Um, but if I go to say a position of 0.5, we can see we have 45 degrees. If I say it's a 180 door, then we can see it's going to be 90 degrees. So that maximum angle gives us some flexibility in case we have a door that goes beyond the 90 degree hinge point. Um, but in this case, what I've done is I've hosted or placed uh, this, this leaf on the work plane of a reference line constrained to here. This is a really common trick for doors. Um, a lot of people use it. Uh, effectively, I'll just set it up now. So really all I've had to do is go to place a leaf, pick a work plane, pick a line, and I'm going to pick the plane of this reference line. I then place this door, lock its parameters, and this will actually move relative to this reference line. So what I can do is move it to here, rotate it to match the orientation of that reference line, no constraints, and then it's going to remain relative uh, to that point. So if I go to an open factor of 0.3, we can see this changes. If the width changes as well, let's say 820, then we can see that the reference line moves and this element will also move based on the end of that reference line. It's a really cool trick and it works really well for doors. Um, so if I say 45 degrees now or 0.5, then we can see we'll end up with a, a pivotable door. Um, in the case of the stacking door, uh, it's a little bit more complex. Um, so this door has two, two reference lines, one here and one here. This is constrained to the first reference line and this is constrained to the second one. I then move these panels based on two formulas. They're a little bit more complicated than the ones I've set up so far. So I won't explain the mathematics in its entirety, but effectively uh, for the first leaf, I check first whether the open factor is less than zero. If so, it's zero. I didn't check if it's more than 0.5 because at that point I know one panel should fully close. And then I take that open factor and times it by two. So when I'm at an open factor of 0.5, um, I times that by two and the first leaf is fully, fully open. Because I then take that from one and times it by the leaf width. The second one um, is obviously not going to start closing or opening until I get to 0.5. And then after that, it's going to move towards one. Um, and in this case, I use a few formulae uh, to make sure that door opens between 0.5 and 1 to a complete position. Um, so how do we animate them in Dynamo? Well, that part's actually really easily uh, set up. So let's just do that now. So I'm in a 3D view. I've just overridden these leaves so they're a little bit more obvious. I think I made that one a little bit too dark. 225, there we go. Um, and I might just also make this transparent so the doors are really, really obvious. There we go. So, um, if I just open up Dynamo, these parameters, uh, currently they're not shared parameters, they could be main shared parameters, it doesn't really matter. The point is they all have the same name. So if I select one of these doors, I have an open factor parameter between zero and one, an open factor parameter between zero and one, and finally a, a, an open factor parameter between zero and one. So I can, I can drive these all using the same method. Um, in this case, let's just focus on this swing door. So I'll make a new, a new Dynamo script. And unlike a lot of Dynamo scripting, I'm going to stay in automatic mode. Um, I'm going to select model element and I'm going to target this door. And I'm also going to create a number slider. Now you have to be careful with this number slider. You're not going to want it to go through too many points um, because every time you move this slider, Dynamo is going to execute. 
So I'm just going to make it between 0 and 1, like my open factor, and I'll apply a step of 0.05. So there are 20 steps and 20 executions between a complete opening of this door. Um, I'll just set this back to 0, and I'm going to set parameter by name, targeting this door uh, to this value. And then I'll create a string, and I'm targeting open factor. And now what should happen as I change the slider is I can progressively change the open factor and I effectively have a 20 frame animation for targeting this door. So if I was doing a demonstration, I could potentially keep Dynamo open to the side and use this as a little animator. Of course, you could build add-ins for Revit that work this way as well, um, where it's less obvious to the viewer um, that this is happening in the background. So I can also do this with the stacking door. So the first leaf closes then they close together. And then we can have a look at our sliding door, which we just created from scratch. And we can see that we're able to bypart the sliders as well. So a really cool little outcome, it probably has very niche applications. Um, on large projects, it might be risky because you are gonna have to execute Dynamo in very short intervals. Um, so we aren't targeting many elements in Dynamo, but sometimes creating a change like this would have a bit of a delay associated to it in Dynamo if you're in a very large model. Um, but generally, it's a really cool little trick. Um, and this model will be on my GitHub, so uh, feel free to download it if you want to see exactly how I built these families. Uh, so there we go. Um, that was a fun little topic. Um, you can find all the files over in my Dynamo repository in GitHub um, and also the little Dynamo script we use to animate those doors as well. So I hope um, you found it a useful and interesting topic today and it might have given people other ideas of things they might be able to use Dynamo for on an automatic or periodic basis. Um, and if you've got any questions or requests or feedback down below, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, and you can also reach me, at, reach me via email as well on this screen. Um, so I look forward to seeing you in future similar topics uh, in future. And um, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care. Bye.